WGSMDB, the Going Solo Network presents with Transformational Life Coach. Well, hello and welcome to the Manifest Your Ideal Life show. My name's Angela Kane and I'm your host, along with my dear friend and colleague, Mary Tudor. You're listening to WGSNDB and the Going Solo Network. Both Mary and I are transformational life coaches and this show is all about how to consciously manifest your ideal life. And over the coming week, Mary and I will be exploring all the ways in which we sabotage our happiness and get in our own way and how to move past that into consciously creating what we want instead of what we don't want. And so coming up today, we're continuing our discussion of the role of thought and how that plays out in our ability to manifest our ideal life. And because it's such a huge topic, we felt that we needed to continue with that this morning. So before we go any further, let's say hello to Mary. Are you there, Mary? Yes. Hi there, Angela, and everybody who's listening today. Great to be back with you. And yes, thoughts, what a huge, huge subject when we're looking at manifesting our ideal life. Um, In the last program, we had some great discussion going on about the cycle that sets off from our thoughts. We looked at the image of a clock face, didn't we? And just at 12 o'clock, we put, here are our thoughts. They are actually the beginning. By the time we move around to three o'clock, we've then got feeling stimulated by those thoughts. We moved around to six o'clock and there we had our actions our responses that our feelings actually generated and finally at nine o'clock we were looking at saying there we've now got the creation of our reality because we've started to respond and take action so Mm. thoughts into feelings feelings into actions and responses actions and responses and we've created our reality we had a great tool that we brought forward last week which was lots of people are familiar with keeping a food diary when they're looking at adjusting their weight many people are not so familiar with keeping a thought diary so we simply Mm. worked at looking at five times a day set an alarm on the alarm simply write down what am I thinking now and then we expanded that out into here's your thought now what's the feeling that's coming from that what are the resulting responses and actions from that? And my goodness, there's the creation of your reality. So Mm. it was a great start to the whole topic of thoughts and where they lead us when we're looking at manifesting our ideal life. And I think for me, Angela, the first thing is recognizing that the thoughts are so powerful. And my next thing is to say, okay, if they are that powerful... I need to take responsibility for my thinking because they are the key to what is happening in my life. And I don't know if you find this when you're working with your clients and in your own life, Angela, but, you know, I can think of times when I've known that there is a thought that is fairly unhelpful to me and I've Mm. simply left it. And what it yeah. started to do is started to eat away. It yeah. started to create a reality that I'm not really that happy with. Mm. But I'm not taking responsibility for it. And therefore, in not taking responsibility, I've kind of fed that negativity. Yeah. 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 Not mm. something I'm really happy to put my hands up for, but it's something I've done. Yeah. Oh, and me something too. I need to keep a watch on, an mm. eye on and say, OK, where am I allowing that thought to take? me that Mm. sounds as though it sounds a bit familiar to you as well Angela oh my gosh yes absolutely Mary in fact it's Mm. it's going on with me right at this moment in time and (laughs) there are a couple of things in in my life at the moment Mm -hmm. where one of them is I've noticed I don't really want to deal with it Ah. so even though I'm completely aware of it and I Mm -hmm. I am taking responsibility for the thought but it's Mm. something that I don't want to deal with right now so I've sort of parked that for a bit okay and 
the other thing is I have to it's something that I have to deal with like today and mm. so I've, I've had a little thought pre- process around well you and I did discuss just before the show didn't we about you know what are the thought processes coming from that such a simple thing like booking a holiday or something like that you know right. all this stuff yeah. comes up and if we don't deal with our stuff then yeah. it doesn't go away does it and it's- what I noticed with the other issue, which is which is a bigger issue, is I've sort of parked it for a while, mm. and but now I've realised that consciously I'm not quite sure which way to go with it. Mm, interesting. So interesting. because consciously I'm a bit confused, and you know I keep getting one minute I think let's do this, and then the next minute I think no, let's do something else. So I think the answer for me with this particular situation is because I'm just coasting along with this thing mm. at the moment. Mm. Um, I thought the the answer came to me, Mary, when I was talking to yeah. you this morning and it was just like, right, what do I need to do with this? And the answer for me with this situation is mm. I have to go within. I have to look within. Yeah. So I have to spend some quiet time Mm. probably you know a a few Mm. days or however long it Mm. takes Mm. just sitting Mm. with this Mm. and getting quiet closing my eyes and seeing what messages I get from my higher self my inner self the Mm. universe god whatever Mm. you want to call it Mm. and so that is that sort of made me feel a bit better because at least I feel like I'm taking some sort of action now yeah, you're taking responsible action. And I'm yeah. loving what you're sharing with us here this morning, Angela, because it is that bit about understanding that, yes, the thoughts are there all the time. What happens when we find a thought pattern which is not helpful to us? Mm. You know, sometimes we can turn straight into it and we can go, that's fine, let's knock it on the head, let's choose something different. But sometimes yeah. we have to say, Oh, I just need to sit with this for a minute or two. Yeah. And it's very interesting that you've opened up the um, idea in our conversation about do we, do we sit with a thought and logically follow it through or do we need to go within ourselves and ask for a deeper, stronger action? So for me this morning, um, I woke into an incredibly negative stream of thoughts and I woke into a negative stream of thoughts simply because I was woken by next door where they're demolishing a house and it was um, a ridiculous o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And so I went into this negative stream of thoughts. I was really lucky because it wasn't long before, before I was before thinking, hang on remember. Mary, how is yeah. this making me feel? Mm. And I went, oh, this is not nice. And I thought, what choices have I got now? I've started thinking negatively. I'm already feeling really uncomfortable. Mm. Um, what, what choices now? And I thought, yeah. okay, I can choose to keep feeding this, ranting about what's going on next door. Yeah. Or I can actually say, that's really disempowering to me. I value myself. I love myself enough to say there is nothing more important to me at this moment than my vibration and how I feel. Yeah. How am I feeling? It's like, oh, okay. I can actually just turn this in a different direction and say, mm. put the pause button on that stream of negative thinking mm. and go, okay, you woke up this morning, Mary. That is a beginning point for a good thought. Yeah, particularly yeah. when we've got lots of troubles going on in the world. You woke up this morning, right, what are you going to do with your day? Are you going to waste it moaning and griping about how you woke mm. up or are you going to do something more positive with it? And I think yeah. that's one kind of level of thinking and you can deal quite logically with that. Mm. The level of thinking that you're now working with here, Angela, is really connected with those huge life issues yes big where decisions we, yeah big big decisions yeah. big decisions they're um very very important decisions mm. and they are the ones that we perhaps choose to say i could go round for months and months in my head 
trying mm -hmm. to work out in inverted commas the right answer yeah but actually I can shortcut to this by first of all working out what is my question mm -hmm. and then going within maybe getting into a mode of meditation sitting quietly and saying okay now let me ask the question within this deep connected quiet space yes Mm. Yeah, exactly. Because, you know, I can ask family members and I can ask various different friends, what do you think I should do? And they will all, you know, it, with, with my best interests at heart, give me their opinion mm. from their perception. But of course, mm. they're not me and they are not living my life. And no. they are not feeling the feelings mm. I'm feeling in my body. And so whilst everybody, you know, most people anyway, certainly mean well when you go around to asking different friends and family members for advice, but nobody really knows what's best for you more mm. than you do. Because I you're the one that's living it, aren't you? You're the one that's feeling the feelings that are coming from dealing with certain situations. And your inner self, your higher being, your, your mm. essence knows mm. the answer. Your soul, if you like, knows the yeah. answer to all of the issues that mm. you're dealing with. Mm. And so yeah. if you start to make that connection, then the, the answers will come to you. And the more we make that connection, Angela, the stronger it becomes and the more yeah. clearly we can start to hear that inner voice. And yeah. something for me that it was incredibly helpful and I still, at the early on, I still find it very helpful is to become aware that if I sit quietly and ask a question, I may not get the answer in that period of time that I am choosing to sit. Yes. So, for example, yesterday yes. there was a question that I had, which I did choose to say, this is big, Mary, just go in and sit quietly with the question. Well, I sat quietly with the question, but I didn't hear, in inverted commas, an answer. And I thought, okay, that's all right. I said I would sit here for 20 minutes and I'd ask the question. Got no response. So I thought... But as I got up and I started going around the next um, tasks that I needed to do, suddenly there was a thought shot into my mind, which was a memory. That memory I could then link on to other things I'd done. And before I knew it, I had the answer to my question. Mm. So for me, it's a bit about when I sit quietly and I go within, I need to release my expectations and I need to allow the answer to arise yeah. at the right time in the right way. Um, yeah. Very important part of um, sitting and asking as far as I'm oh. concerned, Angela. Oh, it yeah. is. And, you know, the, mm. the, the quote that's attributed to Einstein there, Mary, springs to mind mm. in saying that you can never solve a problem at the same level of thinking that created it. And so Wonderful. that's absolutely a mm. perfect scenario, isn't it? So we, and, it, and it's in fact what I'm going to do today. We sit quietly with, with that question mm. and then mm. we release it mm. and then we just wait for the answer to come at yeah. a certain point because when we're on that level when we're on that level of vibration that that particular thought that particular questions on the mm. answer can't possibly come to us because the answer will be will be resonating at a different level won't it Absolutely, Angela. So if taking my example this morning of the noisy builders next door, yeah. I was in a really low vibration with that, stimulating low tricky feelings. Um, you know, r making a complaint was the only solution I could think of at yes. that time, yeah. which is exactly what you're saying, that my logical mind mm. drew a thread from low level thought yeah. gives me low level response yeah. and yeah. and a solution to it whereas what you've introduced here this morning for our listeners is um lift it to a different level to find the mm. answer so mm. maybe going within taking quiet time bit of meditation um 
And I know there's a lot that's put around in inverted commas meditation for people. It's not tricky. It's just sit still with that one thought, yeah. with that one question and say, mm. please help. Where do I go from here? What's mm. the best move for me? Something like that. And something absolutely will always appear for everyone. Mm. Yeah. Yes, it does. Amazing. It, it is amazing. And mm. on that thought, Mary, should we um, take mm. a quick break and then we'll come back with this? I think so. So interesting conversation. <laughs> I'm absolutely loving it. So we'll, we'll, we'll just take a quick break. You're listening to WGSN DB, Going Solo Network, Singles Talk Radio Channel, where we take a lighthearted and candid approach to discussions on the journey of relationship loss, divorce, parenting, being single, relationships building, dating, and yes, sex. Join our listeners and begin living your best life. Hello and welcome back to the Manifest Your Ideal Life show with me, Angela Kane, and my friend, Mary Tudor. And you're listening to WGSNDB on the Going Solo Network. Now, before the break, we were talking about thoughts and, and how they affect us in our daily life, how we, you know, how we can take charge of them and either decide to deal with them right there, right now, or like I've been doing for a few weeks, parking them until it comes up again and uh, because it's a situation that couldn't be resolved immediately. And so I decided I would just put that over there for now and deal with all the other stuff that's going on in my life because I couldn't deal with that right there and then. And now it's come, it's come to my attention today that this is now becoming more imminent. And so it came to me in, in our conversation this morning with Mary, with Mary and I before we started the show that what I need to do is to do some meditation around this. So I'm just going to ask the question, sit quietly for a few days and see what answer comes from my higher self to guide me towards the next step so that was what we were talking about before the break wasn't it Mary and absolutely brilliant and I don't mean to be disrespectful Angela but I just burst out laughing then <laughs> because you beautifully said I'm going to sit for a few days and I thought wow I take my hat off to Angela all for meditating <laughs> for a few days fantastic I love it I thought I got deep respect for that woman deep respect if only Mary if oh, only brilliant brilliant and maybe, yes, when I, when, maybe when I'm sitting on top of Mount Everest I might be able to <laughs> to do that but <laughs> brilliant absolutely fantastic but it's so so true when we notice these these thoughts which are not helping us that are driving our lives in the wrong direction for us yeah absolutely let's pick them up and see where they go and one of the things yes we can sit and do some meditation and go inwards another little thing that I do for myself Angela is I actually just say to myself hmm that's interesting that you're thinking that thought Mary Mm. why are you thinking that thought what is it based on yeah. what does it mean that you actually believe yeah because mm. for me I don't know about you but for me a belief is only a thought that I keep thinking and I might have thought it since um, somebody reprimanded me when I was four or five years old yeah yeah I, I, and, yeah, I, I mean, and younger, I yeah thinking yeah something mm. like that or it could be something like an experience of I didn't get something finished on time in my working life. And ever since then, I've developed this, oh, my goodness, I'm not going to finish on time. Perhaps I won't. And so actually, as soon as I find that negative thinking, it's like, just question it. Mm. Where's it come from? What's it all about? Mm. And that for me can, first of all, it can stop the the huge momentum that's going on because remember we said um, in one of our earlier programs about the momentum that thoughts will deliver yeah. just 17 seconds of thinking yeah. a thought yeah or a particular thought line will bring another thought of a similar yeah. vibration a similar resonance to it and that another 17 seconds brings similar resonance to it. And what we find is just simply 68 seconds, which is really not very long and not too mm. many thoughts. 
and you've got momentum going. So when we're in a situation of recognizing, here's a thought I really don't think is helping create the reality that I want. It's certainly not producing a nice feeling in me. Mm. Just popping in the question that says, why am I thinking that? Is yeah. a really good thing to cut across that momentum. It, it kind is. of stops the train in its tracks, doesn't it? It yeah. does, yeah. Mm. Yeah, mm. and you know, we, 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 have, we all have these beliefs, don't we? I think, I think it was Joe Dispenza that says, by the time we're 35 years mm. old, we're just a set of unconscious beliefs and habits. And, yep. you know, most of our, something like 90 to 95% of our life, is run on autopilot from these beliefs and thoughts mm -hmm. and things that we've accumulated up until up until that point in our life mm -hmm. and completely so empowering to look at our lives and say do you know what I've got choice all the time I can choose to change I can choose to actually think a different thought. I can choose to look in a different direction. And, okay, I certainly can put my hand up and say there have been times when I've thought, simply can't change that. I simply can't change it. And then mm. ultimately I've thought, well, Mary, you know, the choice is yours. What mm. are you going to do with this? Are you going to continue on with thinking this unhelpful thought, which is producing an unhelpful feeling which is making you respond in an unhelpful way and therefore is creating an incredibly unhelpful reality. Mm. And for me, that few experiences like that gave me the conviction and the commitment to my own life to say, I truly am going to take my own power back and I'm going to live in a different way, which says, just watch those thoughts and choose to change, choose to change, choose to change all the time. Because that will create a new reality for me. And that's what I'm looking for. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I think that's so important, really, Mary, to know that, you know, we can change. We do have the ability mm. to change. And I remember my, my mum used to say to me when I was growing up, a leopard never changes its spot. And that, mm. that saying stuck with me. And what she was meaning was that, you know, people don't change, that mm. they they stay the way they are and I and in you know the, and the way she was brought up and in that era obviously mm. that was the belief around at that time but mm. I know that that's not true because I've changed completely yeah from how I used to be yeah. and my thoughts my beliefs everything has mm. changed now mm. so mm. I know that that's not true mm. and yeah. That was a limiting belief that she had that she passed on to me that I believed mm. for, you know, for the first mm. 25, 30 years mm. of my life. Mm. And I know now that that isn't true. And the reason is mm. because, as Joe Dispenza says, that we, you know, we are this set of unconscious beliefs and habits and behaviors. But once we start to consciously notice them, yeah. that's how we go about changing them. And the key to that is remaining consciously aware mm. because once you lose that conscious awareness you do slip back into your old patterns of behavior yeah most definitely most definitely i, I don't know whether you've read the, the honeymoon effect or by bruce lipton mary no and i he haven't talks about that very interesting scenario where when you meet somebody you know you, you meet a new person and you fall in love with them and everything mm. is wonderful Mm -hmm. for a while but then you know you start to take each other for granted and you don't make the, the same effort that you did in the early days and the reason for that is because when you first meet someone the the sheer excitement of that meeting and of meeting that person keeps you very very conscious all the time mm -hmm. but when you you know when familiarity sets in you then slip back into your old ways and that's why so many, he says in it, that he calls it his book The Honeymoon Effect mm. or something like that, because that's mm. why so many people end up with very difficult relationships that ultimately very sadly lead to divorce because mm. they both slip back into their old ways mm -hmm. and they're not consciously trying to mm. become aware of what they're thinking, become aware of how they're behaving.
and how yeah. that's impacting on their partner. So the key really it, to a leopard changing its spots is just conscious awareness. I think that's so important, Angela. And for me, um, I can absolutely relate to that issue of you're in a relationship, wonderful to begin with, and then it starts to become a little mm. tired around the mm. edges. Um, for me now, I would certainly say, never mind my relationship with the other person, what's my relationship with myself? Mm. At what point did I stop being an incredibly open, intrigued, interested child who is going wow the world is my oyster what is here for me to explore what is here for me to be creative about and at what point did I actually just become almost a walking talking um, absorption of thoughts and feelings that have been going on too long other yeah. people's ideas things that I picked up but now coming into that wonderful stage in life where I'm going do you know what I've got the opportunity to fall in love with myself all over again mm. because that's what I'm being invited to do. Here is my opportunity to really change my life, to create a life that I would choose consciously. Mm. And where does it start? It starts with self. So what's my relationship with myself? Do I believe, as your mum so, so perfectly said to you, you know, leopard won't change its spots. I mean, to be honest, Angela, you know, how many of us, if we thought we couldn't change, would mm. sit in our lives and say, well, that's it until I'm ready to meet my maker? Yeah. No, but don't so think many that's people a good idea. do, Mary, don't let you hear it. Oh, that's just me. That's just the way I am. Mm. You know, people say Sad. that, don't they? Yeah. Sad. But that's because, because they believe it, because that's what they've been brought up to believe. Yes. You're absolutely right. So probably one of the big things we would like to pop out there to our listeners today is just question. Mm. Just question where your thoughts are coming from. Yeah. What beliefs are they stemming from? Yeah. Are they beliefs that they've picked up, you've picked up from your parents, from your teachers, from mm. those who brought you up, from your brothers and sisters? Where did you pick up those beliefs? And then say to yourself, do I know that to be absolutely true? Because the chances are, if you go, mm, there's a bit of a flaw in that argument. You know, money doesn't grow on trees. All those yeah. things, our relationship yeah. with money is hugely tied up with yes. our experiences as young children. You know, yes. certainly in households where we couldn't afford things. Yeah. And then we find that we grow up with all these set beliefs about yeah. money. And we start to live the beliefs that we had, as you so rightly said, pre-35. Yeah. Yeah. And post 35 years of age, we're often, if we're not conscious, we're just simply living out a set of beliefs that we picked up for the first 35 years. We are. Now, we are. even if this program this morning just rings a little light bulb for somebody who's listening to go, hang on a minute, I need to start questioning some of the things in my life because my life could be so different yeah. if it was based on a different belief set, mm. a different mindset, a different thought pattern. That would have made this conversation even more fantastic and special than it has been this morning, <laughs> Angela. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I've so enjoyed it again, Mary, but goodness me, the time has come again for us to say goodbye for this week. And so I'd just like to say thank you to everybody for listening. And I know I speak for Mary as well when I say that I hope you've enjoyed the show and that you found it useful and helpful because that's our aim of doing this show to to pass on the knowledge and the information that we've accumulated over the years so that we can pass that on to you so that you can start to consciously manifest your ideal life and with that Mary and I will say goodbye for this week so you've been listening to WGFNDB on the Going Solo Network with me Angela Kane and my friend Mary Tudor so don't forget to tune in again next week when we'll be discussing more interesting topics on how you can manifest your ideal life. So thank you, everyone. Take care and bye for now. WGSMDB, the Going Solo Network presents with Transformational Life Coach, 